Hello and welcome to Simply Made Homestead. I'm Andrew and this is our mushroom edition. If you're new to us, Marion and I have a small homestead where we try to live self-sustained and live independently and grow our own food, reuse what we have and just have that uh, know where the food comes from and have the independent life. Today we're trying something new. We are inoculating logs and putting shiitake mushrooms in them. What we've done is we ordered through North Spore a kit for shiitake mushrooms. It has 100 plugs in them. It comes in a kit like this. It's got the wax, a drill bit, and a little dauber to put the wax on there. Everything you need and 100 plugs to inoculate your logs. Yesterday I went through and I cut down the tree that uh, that we're going to cut down anyways is an oak tree shiitake grows well on oaks if you can look on online figure out what mushrooms go grow on what trees because it's important to have know what tree you want um, you don't want a tree that's been that's rotted it's been dead it's laying down uh, you want one that's been recently cut down uh, the reason why is because other fungus and other mushrooms or no, other organisms will go ahead and start to get in it and take root and it's competition for your mushrooms that you want so you don't want that it's also know the important time of year you go that you want to do it uh, it's january here mid-january january 23rd actually today is my birthday wait we're on youtube i don't know if i'm supposed to tell you that but you don't want to cut down a tree in the spring when your trees are starting to bud and the reason why is because all the nutrients go, grow from the inside of the tree out to the, produce the leaves. And you want those nutrients that's held over the winter within the trunk. So that's why you want to cut it down before the springtime, before they start budding. Ideally, the size of logs you guys want is between four inches, four to eight inches. Uh, I've got something a little bit bigger, uh, up to a foot. And, but anyway, so, most of ours are between four and eight inches and they're about 40 inches long maybe maybe five feet long yes and of course as normal we have our i have my helpers levi and lily here these are our chinese crested dogs she has her jacket on because she's got no hair underneath there all right so importantly there's different methods to stacking your logs once you get them inoculated over here i have two pieces um, once again it's going to depend on where you're at and the time of year and what your process is because down here in florida we don't have to worry about winterization or keeping them ready for the winter that's a different step but down here i'm just going to go ahead and do what's called a crib stack so basically you have two logs on here uh, you put them down side by side apart and then two more of them here you kind of build a log cabin out of it so you just build it up two by two by two by two all right so the first thing you have to do after you get your trees is drill your holes for your plug now you're going to run down a straight line and you're going to drill them about six to eight inches apart and then you're going to ro rotate it over about four inches down and cut another row alternating so it kind of makes a diamond part another four to six inches but anyways ideally you want a diamond in between each each of the your plugs once again we have a plug so that one inch is where the plug will fit in there nicely um, and if you don't know where one inch is or as you get into it I just took a piece of blue tape measured up one inch and that's where this is one inch from here to here. And that way as you go down, you enter it, you know where to stop. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the heavier logs, the, the bigger logs, um, eight, I don't have to lift them up as high because they are, they are oak, they are heavy. So I'm gonna start with them first and let's go.
right, so I'm just starting on top here, and then I'm going to do the sides. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. Also, when you come, you don't want to do it on a knot where little branches are. Um, it just makes it difficult for the mycelium. Mycelium is the, like basically the roots, um, but it's, it's not roots. Mycelium or the fungus ultimately is kind of like a, a network and it's going to grow strands throughout here. They're literally miles upon miles long inside this log. But anyways, so I'm just going to grow it in, cut through here, and but you don't want to go on, hit where these knots are. Something that's important is where you're going to put your mushroom bins. Um, ideally, you want them lower to the ground because there's just more moisture here, and moisture is obviously a good thing. Uh, if, you have, if you're close to a source of water, that's awesome. Once again, there's just moisture within that water. Also, you want it in a shady area, but not 100% shady. You want it between 60 and 80% shade. We have a tendency to find mushrooms grow here quite frequently, so that's why we chose this spot. Um, also, over here would be another really good spot where you have future plants for that. This is out of the way, and we don't ever mow through here, and I can easily fence it off to keep the dogs out here, because they'll end up climbing all over these. So you can see right here, here's the four pattern. Maybe here, 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 here. So that's the pattern you want. Okay, so I think I got enough here for 100 plugs. Ideally, I, I would order more if I was to do it over again, get more logs up here and 
get more than 100 plugs. And you can just keep stacking up as high as you want to go. But our next step is to go ahead and plug these up and then wax them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these logs down. And that way I don't have to work around them and I have full access to where these are these plugs are located. All right. So in this kit, you open it up. So basically, as you open it up, you can see that it's just a dowel and it's got your mushrooms growing all over it. Well, it's not mushrooms at this point, but it will be mushrooms. So anyways, just take one. Find your hole. All right. It's got a light hammer. Pound it in. putting a row in by hand first. Yeah, maybe all of them. And then come back with a hammer. So I'm going to keep these with me, the remainder of these for these smaller logs. I don't trust leaving them out here because the dogs will end up chewing this box and I'll lose the spores everywhere. Alright, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to get the wax ready and go ahead and do these and then we'll finish up the last two logs and go from there. Okay, so the wax that comes with it comes with these little granules and you have to melt it down. Now, the thing when you melt it down is you don't want to use a, an item that you're going to use all the time because it's really difficult to get it out. Uh, some people use an old crock pot uh, or you just use an old pot that you'll never use again. Uh, what we're doing is using the mason jar and we'll just call it a, double boiling it. Ah, that's not it. My wife will let you know what it's called. But basically, it's just a, it's just a quart sized jar inside this. And so it's sitting in here so you can see these are just little granules makes it easy to melt so I have it in there okay so once this is a nice waxy substance we'll go back outside use the applicator and daub it onto the uh, plugs all right so you can see that this is clear now the wax is melted now it's time to take it out and daub it on so we got a wax here and our little wax dauber. Now it's not that hard. This is basically kind of like paraffin wax. I don't know if you can see, you put your finger in there and it just kind of turns to wax. Just like a paraffin wax. All right, so this is a fairly simple process. Get your dauber wet, find your holes. Just daub it on. And it just seals in the holes, keeps all the bad stuff out and good stuff in.
Alrighty. So I'm just gonna put that towel in here, keep this warm while we work on the other logs. meat going up so much, uh, even the price of eggs over there, um, people are looking for more protein, another source of food. Mushrooms, it's a great way to get that uh, substance. Now, don't expect this to be, you come out, produce your first year. This is something more long term, you know, the following year and then many years after. Uh, the rule of thumb for how long a log will produce is one inch the diameter is one equals one year. So if you have a six, six inch log, that should produce you produce about six years. One thing I didn't mention is these are my inoculated logs. All the, obviously these four that we just got through spending past hour doing. They are not sitting directly on the ground. <clears throat> I have another one down here. This is a, a piece of cherry wood. Uh, it's also a hardwood, so it, it'll be here for a while but you want a barrier between your inoculated logs and what's on, on the ground. Now, there are always exceptions to the rule, but for shiitake mushrooms grown on oak logs, this is the way you want it. You want a separation, uh, a barrier. There are other mushrooms and on other logs where you'll actually bury the logs halfway and, it, and in as different scenarios, um, it helps create more moisture, gives it more moisture, once again. Different scenario, different mushrooms. Uh, just follow your instructions on the guides that you get. So, all right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you have not. Once again, thank you very much for watching Simply Made Homestead. Take care and God bless.